So in today's lesson, we're, we're going to be looking at graphing models from descriptions. So it may not occur to you uh, on a regular basis that um, math is actually used in the real world to solve super complicated problems. Um, and so I want to give you an example of that. Uh, we've seen this graph before, but I want to talk about it again. So um, this is a graph of profit versus number of sales. So let's say you were somebody who is in business for themselves and you started up this business and taken out a loan of $50,000. Well, that is represented here by this um, negative 50,000, right? That's the amount that you start with um, that you've borrowed, which is why you have a negative value for your y-intercept. Um, so if you're this person who is um, has started up this business, you want to have a good idea about how many sales it's going to take you to pay back that loan and then to eventually start making money. So real world problems are constantly being solved using graphs or table of values, um, either separately or together. Um, so, you know, this is one example in the business world, but uh, there are tons of examples that I could look at for science, uh, technology, um, geography, history, and so on and so forth. So if there's one lesson that I want you to get out of today's uh, video is that you can use the description of a situation to create a table of values and then plot a graph. And that will sometimes help you to solve um, a, a given problem. So here's an example of, uh, of a description that you can use to create a table of values and then plot a graph. So a website designer charges a flat fee of $200, okay, plus $75 per hour. So we've got a fixed value, an initial value, plus a rate of change here. Uh, and that's charged to design a website. So if you're in business for yourself, you want to keep track of, um, of how many hours you're working and how much money people owe you because that's your income, right? So the question says, create a table of values to represent the cost for the first five hours of work the designer does. All right, so we're going to start with zero hours, um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just filling in my table of values. So I know that the cost for zero hours, before he even starts to work on the website, um, it costs $200. So that is my initial value. Um, it's just like a startup cost and, and so on and so forth. So after one hour, I know that he's going to charge the $200 uh, plus uh, the $75 for the hour. And that's going to give a total of 275 hours. Okay, the next uh, is going to be $200 plus um, two times the $75, right? And that's going to give me uh, $350 and so on and so forth. So we've gone ahead and filled in the table of values for you, um, but the, you'd go about this the same way if you were solving a problem. Just go ahead and use the information in the description to help you fill in the relevant information in your table of values. So the next part of uh, the question uh, asks me to graph this relation. So um, what I've noticed on a few graphs is that people seem to be using whatever values are given to you in the table of values. Um, what you need to remember is that it's important to construct your graph by creating equal increments for your scale, right? Not just using your data points, but using equal increments. So I'm going to first label my axes. So I've got cost here on my x-axis. Oops, nope. Hours worked. Uh, on my x-axis, and that's because it's my independent variable. And cost, because the cost depends on the number of hours uh, worked, I'm going to put cost uh, on my vertical axis. Okay, so I want to use up as much of my graph space as possible. And so I'm going to take a look at this and um, and see, well, my on my horizontal axis, it goes from 0 to 5. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I haven't used up the, all of my graph space, so that's no good. Um, and if I, so I'm probably going to want to spread that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that works a little bit better. 
So now when I look at my vertical axis, the cost axis, I see that my lowest number is 200, and that's pretty high. So I might want to start at zero on my x-axis, but for my y-axis, I'm going to want to create a break. Um, and so I'm going to start at 200 here. And again, I want to spread out my graph as much as possible. I don't want it all squashed into one corner. So I'm going to look and see what my highest value is. My highest value is 575. So I usually want to go a little bit above that. And so I'm going to go up to 600. And so if I go 3, 4, 5, 600, that's not going to work. So I think I'm going to go up by 50, so 250, 300. So I'll make this 300 and, so, and I'll fill that in. So now I'm ready to graph. So I'm going to go ahead and start plotting points. So at zero hours, I'm at $200. So there's my y-intercept. Remember, my y-intercept exists where the value of my x is zero. Uh, one hour, 275. So here's 250. So 275 is round about here. And so on and so forth. So I'm seeing here that I have a nice linear pattern at four hours. It's exactly 500 bucks and then 575 right here. Beautiful linear pattern. In fact, if I had a way of drawing this into a straight line, I would draw my line of best fit. Um, so there's all sorts of things that I could figure out from this now, right? So um, Let's say, for instance, somebody um, was charged, I don't know, uh, let's say uh, 450 bucks, right? So 450 bucks over here, I would follow this along and say, well, the web designer must have worked three and a half hours, for instance. Right, so uh, those are some things that, some ways that you can use the description in a question to help you fill out a table of values and then create the corresponding graph. Now, uh, what I want you to work on is section 7.1 in your workbook that is located on page 239. I'd like you to work on questions number one and two.